How does it feel, Wayne, to stand on the very stones that ran with your parents' blood? Do you feel sad, full of rage, or does that outfit help bury your feelings, hiding your true self? Oh, you are a truly extraordinary specimen. I look forward to breaking you. Hotline straight to my bestest friend in the world. Just think, I can call you up whenever I get bored. <laughs> I think our relationship is really maturing here. The next thing you know is we'll be exchanging emails or meeting up for romantic dinners. You have one missed call. Ring, ring. I was just remembering when it first occurred to me. It was about six months after you left me on that rooftop back at the asylum. As the bones knitted back together, I had plenty of time to think. So how do you keep a secret from the world's greatest detective? Well, do you know? It's easy. You stick it right in front of him, right under his long, pointy nose. And wait. <laughs> I hope you're doing your best here, Bats, because I just had a horrible thought. We could both actually die here tonight. Fortunately, the odds are weighted in my favor, but just imagine how you'll feel if I'm gone. It's not like you're not lonely enough, right? All that brooding is not good for you, you know. Do you have someone to go home to each morning? And I don't mean that kid you drag across the rooftops. <laughs> I mean someone real. Someone you can talk to. I don't think you do. It's sad, isn't it? You do all this for Gotham, and the only person you can rely on is... me. You have one missed call. Hey, been missing you. Get back to me. Laters! You have one missed call. Hello? I'm not sure that you got my call earlier. I'm just dying to speak to you. Call me, Bats! <coughs> you have one missed call. Bats? Seriously? You're making me paranoid. Why aren't you answering my calls? <laughs> You haven't gone and died on me, have you? <laughs> you have one missed call. Look, I know you're not dead. I'm missing a group of my guys down under the tower. <laughs> Guess that means you know about the guns already. <laughs> okay, I admit it, they're mine. Strange gives them to me, okay? Can we be BFFs again? You have one missed call. Uh, maybe it wasn't you that took out my guys. All right, then. The message I left before, you know, the one I left about the guns, you can ignore it. Just delete it. You have one missed call. Right. This is getting ridiculous. I've been leaving messages all night and you still haven't got back to me. Who do I need to kill to make a pickup? You have one missed call. And last... Hey, Bats, where you been? I was just calling to find out how you're feeling. Are you getting the hallucinations yet? Mm, I know, <laughs> it's hard to tell these days. You just never can tell if it's Scarecrow again, that little guy with the hat, my blood running through your veins, or if after all this time, you really are actually going crazy. You have one missed call. Hey, Bats, are you okay? I'm sorry I had Harley steal your cure. You were so busy with Freeze that she didn't even have time to ask. But don't worry, as soon as that little minx is back here and I've had my share, I'll save some for you. You'll have to work for it, but it will be right here waiting for you. You probably won't believe this, but I don't really think I can sit back and watch you die. 
<laughs> it's selfish, really, but we need each other. Life would be so boring without you. Who would I talk to? Who would really understand me? Hello? Anyone in there? No sense of humor. Ah, the strong and silent type, eh? Think you're safe behind that mask? Give me 20 minutes in a can opener, and I'll have you whimpering like a schoolgirl. You might like it. That's enough, patient. Guard, leave us. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Professor Hugo Strange. And you are... Two-Face. Catwoman. <laughs> Batman! We can play these games as long as you like. Great! I love games. Not in my facility, you won't. I'm offering you this opportunity to make a deal. I'm fully aware of your condition. The last thing you have is time. But I can make your final days more comfortable. And in return, I'd be giving you... Uh... I wish to study you. I need to know why you are the way you are. <laughs> I don't have long, Doc. You're going to need more than some psycho mumbo-jumbo to get to the bottom of what's wrong with me. Oh, I have more than that. Much more. So, do we have a deal? How are you feeling today? You promised me another doctor, Strange. Maybe you shouldn't have killed the one I sent last week. What made you do it? Fish gotta swim, birds gotta fly. Besides, it was worth it to see the look on her face. Hey, you know what? I think I've got a piece of it here in my pocket. You are trying my patience. That was the third doctor you've killed. Well, keep on sending them, Doc. I'm trying to break my record. I think it is time for you to do something for me. <laughs> Name it, Doc. Tell me how you came to be. Explain what made you what you are today. How you come to be sitting across the table from me. Dying. Is that all? Well, I guess you could say I once had a very bad day. Really? Go on. It was a Thursday night. Things had been getting worse. I was three days from the bank foreclosing on my home. The chemical plant I worked nights at was about to lay off half the workforce. And I was sitting in the hospital, holding the hand of my pregnant wife, wishing to God that she wasn't dead. That must have been upsetting for you. Probably was. Back then, though, all I knew was that if I didn't let old man Falcone's men into the plant that night, they'd have killed me, too. So here's the thing. I had to decide. Could I live without her? Was there any point going on? I've got to admit it. I was scared. Not of being dead, you understand. No one would blame you if you were. It is perfectly common. Do I look common? No. I was scared of the part just before you die, when you don't know what is about to happen, when you're desperately clutching at life and trying to hold on with slippery, blood-covered hands. So I made a decision right there. And what was that? That? Well, that... <coughs> is a story for another day, Strange. I think I may need to see a doctor. Get me. You were telling me about the night your wife died. Oh, no, Hugo. As I recall, I was waiting for you to send me another doctor. We both know I have sent you three more doctors. Did you? Yes. One was left dismembered outside the elevator to my office. The other two have not been seen since they were sent to you. How careless. Listen, Doc. Professor. Okay, Professor. I'll give you a little more. I just hope you're taking notes. It's the day after, and I'm standing in the freezing rain, just staring at the chemical plant, feeling numb. 
Martini was dead. It didn't seem real. I can remember the day I first met her, her infectious smile as I told her bad joke after bad joke, how even after living with the pathetic wretch I was, she still wanted my child. And then they arrived. <laughs> Reality's way of yanking me another wedgie. Falcone's men told me to cheer up. He said, things could be worse. I asked him how. He grabbed me by the collar, pulled me close. He'd been eating garlic, and each word stank as he threatened to perform oral surgery on me with a nail and a brick. A creative guy. They hand me a box. I remember thinking it was heavy. Was it a bomb? A gun? I'd never used a gun before. Were they that heavy? And what was in the box? How's that doctor coming along? I'll get you one. And when you do, I'll tell you the rest. You are looking a little better, yes. Well, I have my good days and bad days, but I do try and start each one with a smile. <laughs> are you ready to continue your story? Yeah, why not? So where was I? The box. Ah, yes, the box. <laughs> so there I was, tearing open this box, expecting the worst. And all it had in it was a crazy red dome and a cloak. <laughs> ah, I thought they were having a joke with me, but oh, no. They made me put it on. They said it was a disguise. It would keep me safe. It smelled like garlic. And that was it, really. I was dressed up like a spaceman, barely able to see, trying to break into the one place in this town that had given me a job. Have you ever tried to walk with an enormous fishbowl on your head? Don't answer that. It's hard. I couldn't see where I was going. I must have tripped one of the alarms. I heard muffled gunfire. I panicked and tried to run. And then I saw him. Who? That man. Really? Yes, really. Batman tried to hit me. I moved out of the way, but, well, what you need to understand is I had this giant bowl on my head, and I lost my balance. It's like life, really. One minute everything's bad, and the next your wife's dead and you're hanging on for dear life, suspended over a tank of experimental chemicals. I'm sure he'd say he tried to save me, but we all know he didn't. I fell for a second... Just as I hit the surface, I thought I may just get away with this. I assume that wasn't the case. Do I look like I got away with it? I was drowning. The chemicals were burning my skin. My entire body felt like it was on fire. And it was all his fault. Whose fault? Batman's? Who else? Yours. Come again? Let me tell you what I believe. I believe that you have fabricated a series of events that you use to conceal the truth about your condition. I have read twelve different accounts of your past, all different except for one detail. Batman. What can I say? I like to keep things interesting. A wise man once told me that if you have to have an origin story, you're better off making it multiple choice. And never facing up to the truth of what happened. What you did. How you got here. Oh, I know exactly how I got here. A big truck brought me here from Arkham. You remember the asylum, don't you? Of course. Well, good. I'd hate to think that I'd fabricated seeing you watching me in my cell all those times. Excuse me? Hugo, you merry maniac. You were obsessed with me. <laughs> you all were trying to get in here. Next thing you'll tell me it wasn't you who sent old Sharpie over the edge. Nice work, by the way. Thank you. So here's the thing. If you want to make sure that no one else finds out about your past, you should start poking your nose into mine. Oh, and send me another doc, doc. I think I need a second opinion.
Sit down, Mr. Dent. It is Mr. Dent I am talking to, right? Use a real name. True face, if you wish. Please, sit. What is it strange? Not happy just arresting us, throwing us in this place. I wish to understand you. I have read the reports, seen the footage, and now I want to hear your side of the story. <laughs> we'll see. I assume that you feel the need to toss your coin in order to decide whether to answer my questions. You ready to find out? Well? Came up bad. Sorry. Not a problem. Guard, take Mr. Dent's coin off of him. No! Good. Now let us see what fate has in store for you. I'll kill you for this. Really? Look at your coin. It wants you to tell me about that day in the courtroom. It was painful. Elaborate. I was naive. I thought I could make a difference. Falcone was going to go down for what he had done. But he had other plans. Look at my face! I am. A combination of first, second, and third degree burning. Mm, the scar tissue is quite fascinating. You think? And that is all it took to make you the way you are. Give me my coin. Not yet. What is it strange? Are you enjoying this? Not in the slightest. Let's go back further. You were a rising star, a beacon of light for this city, a white knight riding in to save it with a dark knight not far behind. You can leave him out of this. He's wrong. They all are. No one understands the beauty of fate's hand. I'm grateful to Falcone. He gave me a clarity, a purity that few will know. Everything boils down to a simple choice. This way or that way. Good or bad. Do you really believe that? How could I not? Interesting. So all you need is this coin and everything is simple? Give me it. Or what about this coin or this or these? <laughs> you doing? Proving a point. Fate didn't make you answer my question. I did. I replaced your coin with my own. See, you answered me because I wanted you to. How is he today? The prisoner has been quiet. Since getting those coins, he has spent most of his time examining them. Good. Hello, Harvey. Are you ready to talk? Leave us. We don't want to talk. Not to you. Please, take a seat. I have one last thing to discuss, and then I will give you something in return. I don't know. I can't decide. It's too confusing. Of course it is. I want to talk about Mr. Wayne. Why? Indulge me. We don't like a guy. Hardly surprising. Did you ever consider that you were alike? A traumatic event created you. An equally traumatic event altered him. He's nothing like us. There's no risk, no danger. It's just money and girls. We should kill him. Maybe you should. Listen to me, Harvey. I am going to give you a simple choice. This is your coin. Is it? Why should I trust you? It was your father's, correct? You know every inch of it. When you close your eyes, you can feel it, can't you? Give me it, please. I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you. You believe that this coin determines the fate of your world. I, however, believe that your condition has always been present. It was there before you were attacked, and it is still there now. You probably had headaches. Your wife found you unpredictable. Scary sometimes. Give us it! I'm going to throw the coin in the air. If you let it fall, I will do whatever I can to cure you. I will help you become the man you used to be. Or 
If you grab it, I will let you loose in Arkham City. And I will tell you what Catwoman is doing right this second. I can't decide. You have to. Mm. At this moment, Catwoman is preparing to steal the contents of the safe in your old campaign office. The bitch. We need to stop her. And you may. Goodbye, Mr. Dent.